worldwide welcome to dr zia ahmed youtube channel uh, today's video is just a screen recording of a poem by maki qureshi that is snipers in karachi uh, everybody knows that maki qureshi is a pakistani poet and she died in the 90s but before dying she has done marvelous work uh, the particularity of her work is that she always writes a poem about some event and describes the event and then its consequences and probably some of the rationale is also attached to that the viewers who want to know about maki qureshi they must go to my youtube channel in order to find out another video on maki qureshi where i have talked about the details of biography of maki qureshi let us begin with the poem the the, the poem doesn't have any stanzas so that is why we shall have to read it in one go if we want to but for the sake of analysis i have tried to divide it into certain parts the first part is visible before you people it says death is everywhere also here at a jerry built stall selling vegetables four days old the trucks too frightened to deliver from under onion sack its cutles steel plated shiny its tail slung over vindictive as a gun the very first line that is everywhere is indicative what the poem is going to be definitely maki qureshi is talking about the terribleness of death which is coming to the innocent victims without their crime without the problem they have generated anywhere but death is coming up to them and it is everywhere the universality of death of course is there but it is being talked with reference to karachi and with reference to the gunmen the snipers that death is coming it can come to you everywhere no places to be halted to be stopped to be hidden same is the case with the next line in order to prove her point she says also here at cherry bill stall death has not spared any one not even a stall which is built of uh, the raw material which is not so strong it is so flimsy so weak uh, this stall is used in order to sell the vegetables but the vegetables are at least 4 days old because the trucks are not supplying regularly trucks are also frightened they are not supplying regularly because they are frightened because they also feel that death is everywhere that is why the stale vegetables on fresh vegetables are being sold but one truck brings the vegetable and as soon as the the sacks of onion the sacks of other vegetables are downloaded out of one of the sacks one can see an object which is steel plated which is shiny also and its tail is slung over it is vindictive as a gun so a gun comes out from among the sacks and this gun is shining also this is steel plated also and this is having its uh, slung as well its sling as well so the steel platedness of the gun goes to show that it is very powerful it's very strong it's shiny it means it's a freshly it has come there and it looks like a gun it is there and it means that with the normal vegetation that is the vegetable of onion and others at a common place the gun is visible it has come in the trucks probably somebody hid it in the vegetable and that's why the gun is there so death and gun can be interrelated together when we look at the title of the poem that is snipers in karachi that it, the guns are entering and intervening into the life of karachi people it is everywhere the common people and the enemies have the differences army and the police and the common people have the differences army and the common uh, the police people may be fighting with each other on certain law enforcing matters but the common man is not to be hit within that here we can see that it's a it's a vegetable stall where the gun has been found and that is why death can be here as well the death has been caused and everywhere therefore death has been proved that death is there this is the relevance of the first line or the third and fourth line that we are occupying and in the same tone if we go further we can see panic hard boiled traders abandoned shops as soon as the gun is visible as soon as the working of the gun is there panic spreads everywhere everybody becomes terrified everybody becomes terrorized the shopkeepers which are mostly uh, suffering from the haggling or the 
discussion with the with the customers or they are all the time thinking of their profit or they are feeling that they, they, their business may not be running in that way even these shopkeepers run away abandon their shops the women who are present there they are ready to buy this vegetable they also run away they they keep their draperies uh, you know they, they try to keep their draperies safe their bodies safe but they, their bodies become visible up to thigh sometime up to knee sometime and in this way the the gun has spread this type of panic so panic and death both are present there which is the purpose of terrorism and that terrorism has been so successful so far and a question is put in which sack does it silently wait where was this gun and the question is now generalized by thinking that what type of sack may be sack of potatoes, maybe tomatoes, maybe onion, maybe any sack. In any sack, the gun can be there, the bomb can be there. And this, therefore, the question is there to generalize that whatever you see, the bag, the covering, there these things can be there. And therefore, the avoidance or the safety of the human being, security of the human being from such a thing has become impossible since these times have entered, as Maki Krashi says in Karachi. She says, in pipe, stones, pound, smash, until it must lie, minced into dust. Everything, uh, when the bomb explodes, everything can fall into the ground, into the dust. The gun can go down into the dust. The particles of the bombs can go into the dust. The bodies and the stones of the human beings can go into the dust. But it is not so. All of a sudden, something else happens. And this is what the poet is going to explain further. The poet says, the next day on a bus, a dozen passengers tumbled up on curbs and doorways drinking tea. Death is everywhere. So the line, the first line is repeated, death is everywhere because the death did not stop at the vegetable stall. It has entered into a running bus as well. In bus, we have dozens of passengers and these passengers have died, have become the victims to this bomb and they therefore are no more available. In this way, death is everywhere. You can see that death is present on the doorways, death is present on the stoppages, death is present on the tea stalls as well everywhere death is present death is scuttling it is moving slowly but surely through traffic it rides a shiny steel plated roar death is present on a certain vehicle which can be shining and which can be steely one as well it, it's raising the noise of a roar as well this death is everywhere the gun now unslung and lethal as a sting this gun that has come among the vegetables that is now uh, not uh, slung as it should be in the peaceful time on the shoulder of a soldier it is no more slung it has become lethal it has become able to sting anybody who is present there so in that way the twice repeated line goes to prove that death is everywhere in this way this whole poem draws a map or a picture of the situation of Karachi when terrorism was there, that common people were suffering because of that everywhere. If they were on the vegetable stalls or any other buying markets, they could be the victim of that gun. And men and women, all, everybody would be the victim of that. And it should end, the suffering of one person should end, but it does not because death is spreading its wings everywhere because of the weapon system, because of the weapons and guns which have come. Death is riding on the roads of Karachi but nobody is safe from that so that is why the poet says that death is everywhere let's talk a few things about the poem the poem as I said does not have any stanza formation it does not have any rhyme scheme however we can say that there are 22 lines uh, as a whole in the poem with respect to these lines it's not that long poem it describes about an event not one event rather we should say it talks about two events and these one happens on the uh, vegetable stall and the other in the bus these two events have been talked about both of these events have resulted into death terror and fear the people who die they suffer from death but the people who survive they have a strong fear and terrorism is all the time in the minds of those people this is probably the theme of the whole of the poem as different words I have tried to capital uh, put them into bold form so that you can have an imagination that this type of theme is possibly present in the poem and the message of the poem is that humanity is suffering all the time 
when the people fight with each other the armies fight with each other kings and dictators fight with each other civilization dies and it remains on the threat all the progress of humanity with respect to culture and civilization and making the life peaceful of love of life that all finishes when such things happen and only thing that comes in the share of humanity is the suffering Overall, the poem has a very simple language, but it's a very powerful language because it conveys a very powerful image of the terror, of threat, of the fear of the people who are suffering from that. It doesn't talk about the armies and the police. It talks about the common people that we are suffering. The poet has used dashes, dots, and hyphens and parentheses in order to sometimes compound the words, in order to create a specific effect. For example, if you have a look at the second line, Jerry built. There's a very compounding word she has created. And after that, uh, in order to explain why the vegetables were not fresh, the trucks too frightened has been put in parentheses. And then comes the hard boiled trader, another compound word used as a as a adjective for the trader. And then uh, certainly we have three dots to show that some kind of continuity was required. But because of the presence of death, at once the thing has been turned towards death instead of talking about many more things which can be packed inside these three dots. And after that, another one, we have the hyphen, double hyphen used in order to indicate that it has become more lethal because no, it's not slung on the shoulder, rather it is in the hands and that is why it can cause as much damage as possible. So in this way, some of the punctuation marks have been used by the poet in order to stress on certain things. Uh, the techniques of compound words have also been indicated. Uh, the image which, uh, uh, which the poem creates is that the lifeless image, first of all, of the, of the gun, of the bomb is present there. But then the same bomb and the same gun becomes full of life. And as a result, it destroys life also. It means that the destruction is packed inside that lifeless gun, and that destruction can be spread on human beings. So lifeless object can kill life full objects of the human beings at the very one. The poem goes to talk about Pakistani history, the violent history which was present during the 80s and 90s, 90s when Pakistan was suffering from the evil of terrorism and the gun culture and the other kind of things which were happening, all creating difficulties for humanity and as a whole creating a history for Pakistan from where we needed to learn but so far we have not. The poem is written in the context of Pakistani nation and people, that their country was created, of course, in the name of peace and in the name of God, but it also caused a lot of trouble for humanity, suffering for humanity. The same thing continues to be there because of the international politics and because of international conspiracies that Pakistani people are still suffering. We need to learn out of that because what we get at the end of the day is death and suffering for us people, nothing else. So that is why the message of the poet is quite clear in this poem that we need to learn. The student, for students, there is one advice that when they write the critical appreciation, they must write, first of all, the theme and the para, uh, type of uh, message of the poem, first of all, that how does it convey. Then the students can go for writing a few things about the life biography of Maki Qureshi and the context of Karachi with respect to terrorism they must write. After that, the poem may be analyzed with respect to the words which I have put in bold format. And then some of the technicalities of the poem may be discussed as given below. Uh, in that way, you can give a very uh, you know powerful critical appreciation of the poem you must not forget to relate it with the situation in which this poem is created. It is according to the age, it is according to the problem which the age was having when Maki Kurashi was alive and living in Karachi. She has written that. So a, a disturbed, terrorized and fearful Karachi full of deaths that has been indicated here and this is of course, with reference to the age in which this uh, this poem is being written. So that is why these things students must be including in order to write the critical appreciation of this poem. Hopefully, some of the things have been clarified and some of the things are still there. Students must read different research papers, uh, which I could locate on the internet about this poem and many poems of Maki Qureshi with respect to Pakistani fiction in English, Pakistani poetry in English, Pakistani literature in English, they must read and try to analyze with respect to the way the third world countries, the formerly colonized countries are dealt by the people of the power and they use and employ and exploit these people and the nations with respect to that. Edward Said and uh, Gayatri Spivak and uh, Fanon, these people can be brought in in order to create a literary context and to write the critical appreciation of the poem. 
so see you in some next video thank you for watching all that and if you like it do not fail to hit the subscribe as well as the like button so thank you and that's it from me for this day hope to see you again